Got You Back Podstream is brought to you by Kinprint. For all your company's promotional needs, they do it all. Apparel, promotional products, using the highest quality brands. They do logo design, signage, and printing. Kinprint will promote your brand with excellence. Visit kinprint.ca. What's going on, Night Owls? Time for a little Got Your Back After Dark. After midnight start. Love it. After a hell of a hockey game. Oilers, Avalanche, two Titans going toe-to-toe. That was entertaining. Jason Strudwick, myself, Rob Brown. Going to break it down. Zuby along for the ride as well. We're coming at you from our long shot studio here in Sherwood Park. All game days or all day happy hour specials as always. That's $5 Long Shots Lager as well. Check them out. Stony Plain Road and here uh, in Sherwood Park as well. As always, the podcast proudly presented by our title sponsor, Sherwood Buick GMC. Oh, they're going nuts this month. Trying to sell 400 cars. That means if you're looking, it's the place to go because chances are you're going to be able to find a deal. They're the number one volume GMC dealership in Canada, six years running. And when they get their mind set on something like this, Phil just wants to get the deals done. So head on down there. If you're even thinking about it, go check them out at Sherwood View at GMC. Tell them Got Your Back sent you. Tell them that you listen to the pod and that we sent you down there. They'll get some ultimate detail packages thrown into any deal as well. Struddy. Do we have Brownie yet, uh, Zoobs, or just, just Strud's for now? Okay, very good. Uh, Rob Brown will be joining us. He's just finishing up uh, the post-game show on 6.30, Chet. Struds, Oiler fans are going to be super pumped here with the result, but that was a really good game, man. That was a fun game, a good game. High-end guys, like, woo! Tons of high-end players on both sides, um, not to mention two goaltenders that put on an absolute clinic out there today. Yeah. Um, fun to watch, man. Like, that is, to me, that's the perfect game. Chances at both ends, goalies play well, low scoring game. Um, and for the most part, what it was there was there one penalty called on each team, maybe outside then maybe the fights? Like there weren't many, yeah, weren't not many, a lot. There, there weren't many. I don't know. I I I don't think there was even was there one each, maybe. Either way, um, that that to me is my perfect game. I don't like seven, six games because the goals come too easy and you don't have to earn them. Tonight, the every single of those goals was earned. For sure. Brownie entertaining. Hey, buddy, we'll get to the all the details in a minute here, but just we need a big picture thought here. Like, both were rested, both fairly healthy. Post-trade deadline, both teams had loaded up. This was a look through the looking glass here a couple of months down the road, and, and it didn't disappoint just in terms of the caliber of the hockey. No, it was fantastic. Uh, the entertainment value was 10 out of 10. As Strud said, goalies were good. The skilled players were skilled. Uh, both teams made trade deadline acquisitions that came through for them tonight. Uh, it, it was one of those games that both teams deserved at, uh, at least a point. It was a, a wonderful game, and I do believe it lived up to the billing. Absolutely. So much to break down from that game, so let's just dive right into it. Courtesy Adrenaline Diesel, Edmonton's heavy-duty diesel truck repair shop. They perform services from oil changes to engine swaps and overhauls, modified engine work as well. The crew at Adrenaline are there to get your truck or trailer in great shape, like it's right out of the factory. Drop in or check uh, check out what they do online. It's AdrenalineDiesel.ca is the website. That's AdrenalineDiesel.ca. Okay. Uh, we'll break down all of the game and the machinations and how it all, all went and everything, guys. But I think we just got to go right to the overtime winner. And uh, very clear, two pretty significant mistakes there, Struds. I'll let you break down each one, though. One from Leon Dreisaitl, one from Evan Bouchard in the final seconds as the clock is ticking down. Ooh, dangerous time. Dangerous time at the, near the end of uh, when it's regulation or right? just a period cl- clicking down. You cannot allow yourself to to relax for a second when the most dangerous player on the other team has the puck in your zone. And uh, Bouchard goes in the corner, and he just, instead of coming in and pinning the player to the wall or stick on puck, he just kind of follows the guy around, the guy being Nathan McKinnon. Uh, McKinnon is allowed to cycle out of the corner or spin out of the corner and hammer one 
uh, backhand pass right to the middle of the ice. Just that I would believe a kind of a hope. He's hoping someone there. Uh, meanwhile, Leon Dry settle as good position in the neutral zone and uh, gets beat up the ice by um, obviously the Avs player who gets there and taps it in. Yeah. So just. You know, it is so close, and you you don't know exactly what the clock's going to be because as soon as the puck goes over the line, you can see Elon looks up to see if there's time left. But Brownie, yeah. like those are, that's just a little bit of just intensity there at the end of the game, and it's it you know that that those kind haunt you. They haunt you uh, for for the evening, Brownie. Arturi Lekkinen. Lekkinen, sorry, yeah. Yeah, well, they, you're right, Strud. It, it's you can't fall asleep for a second against good players. And I'm going to look both mistakes she pointed out, and it was very obvious. Leon talked about his mistake after the game. Bouchard, he, if he doesn't pin him, get into a passing lane. Make it, make force McKinnon to pass it through you if you're not going to be able to pin him against the board. But I'm looking at glass, glass half full if you're an Avalanche fan. The great plays made by the Avalanche players on that overtime goal. McCarr's got yeah. the puck, and he has 10 seconds to go in the game. I think he's he's dead tired. He does not want to have a turnover and McDavid have a last rush. I think he's going to run the clock out. But Nate McKinnon, who was standing in front of his bench on the boards, sprints through the middle. He says, I want the puck. I want one last opportunity. The car makes a great pass just off the stick of McKinnon. He, McKinnon had Bouchard beat. If, that, if he gets the pass, he's in on a breakaway. Now, the puck goes in the corner. Only two players in the world can create a play out of that. Both of them were playing tonight, McKinnon and McDavid, because <laughs> the speed it took, the speed it needed to get to the corner, get the puck, and make a play. No one else in the league can do it. But McKinnon doesn't quit on it. Goes to the corner, wins the race, and then whether it was a hope play or whether he knew that Lechnin was going to the front of the net, he wins the race and puts it where he needs to put it. And then Lechnin just, you know what? I'm going to sprint to the net. I don't know if I'm going to get a scoring chance. I don't know if the puck's going to come out. But I do know that if I don't skate, I'm not going to get that opportunity. So for me, there were two mistakes made by the Oilers, but there were yeah. three great plays made by the Colorado Avalanche that got them the extra point. Absolutely. For sure. They're a hell of a team, and they got great players. They're going to make plays. Struds, I remember a few weeks ago, I can't remember exactly which game it was, we pointed out a play from Evan Bouchard in a big moment that we didn't like. I didn't like because I thought it didn't show the sense of urgency in a big moment. And I think at times with Evan Bouchard, uh, at certain points in games, in big moments that he deserves to be on the ice for, that he should be on the ice for, because he's a hell of a good defenseman, there are some times where his attention to detail and his sensing of danger aren't where they need to be. Bouchard defenders went ballistic at that suggestion. Tonight is another night. It's a big moment where you just want to see a guy that's a heck of a defenseman and deserves to be out there just make sure in a big moment. It's it's a little bit of a trend with him in some of these moments, and it's just part of his game that he needs to continue working on, and this will be a learning experience for him. Yeah, unfortunately, it's a hard lesson learned because you're the one standing there, right, as it goes in, and then all young defensemen, they all go through it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's just it's just that extra little push um, not to take it for granted. And, and mm -hmm. you know, tonight as I was watching the game, I was watching, and, and I'm a different position player, but Andrew Cogliano, that guy, he just squeezes every last drop of juice at every shift. He just goes hard and he 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 just he makes sure he overchecks or he gets a stick in the lane. Like he doesn't never gives up on the play. And that's what whatever is he's got to be at eleven hundred or twelve, whatever number of games he's played, I, I'm guessing by this point, because of that, because of that extra attention to detail. And so I recognize it's a wrong position, but those are the, the little details you have to have in your game uh, just to make sure you clean things up. So tough lesson, but you know what? He'll get into that position again and he won't, he won't, um, he won't make the same play again. Brownie, can we go big picture on Leon Dreisaitl's night? There are some pointing to a minus three night from Leon Dreisaitl. There are some pointing to the mistake on the winner. Uh, Dreisaitl was really upfront about that. And actually, you know what? Let's go to the Weiss Johnson sound box first here. And we'll hear from Leon Dreisaitl. I like the fact, guys, we went in there. I mean, and right at, we're literally, we're interviewing him six minutes after the goal, five minutes after the goal. He doesn't have a lot of time. It's a frustrating moment, but I like the fact that I asked him a more generic question about the margin for error being so slim in games like this. 
and he flat out owned the mistake. He did it himself. He didn't wait to be asked about it, and he did it multiple times, which I like. So we'll get to the Wee Johnson sound box here. 45 years in the business. If you need a new furnace, garage heater, air conditioner, hot water tank, or any of those things serviced, Wee Johnson is the place to go. Visit Wee-Johnson.com. Jingle. Uh, Leon Dreisaitl, keeping in mind, this is moments after that goal is scored. They're a fast team. They, they limit you to, to, to chances, right? I um, thought we had enough looks to potentially win the game, um, but that's how these tight games go, right? Um, it's a split second where, um, you know, I, I lost my guy there and, and the game's over. So, um, But all in all, I thought it was a, a good game. Need a little, you know, half a second more awareness. Um at the end of the game there. So, Brownie, there was that play we discussed it at the end of the game. There was also, I believe, the first goal of the game where Jari Saddle was on the back check. He ended up getting beat up the ice and is, you know, circling back to the bench after a Colorado goal there. He ends up minus three on the night. My assertion is, though, I thought Leon Dreisaitl actually played a pretty darn good game tonight. I thought he was in a tough matchup, and I thought he was on the right side of it for the most part. A couple of uh, tough you know, tough moments, but I thought he played pretty well. You? I thought he played well, too. I mean, great players make mistakes. The tying goal, Connor McDavid turned away from the front of the net. It was yep. his guy that went to the net. That was Walker. So great players make mistakes. If McDavid doesn't do that. They Maybe they win the game 2-1. Uh, in overtime, it was, it was on Leon, 100%. But about a minute and a half earlier in overtime, Leon Drysettle threw Devin Taves to the side. And said Nugent Hopkins in on a breakaway. <laughs> yeah, that was if Nugent ridiculous. Hopkins scores, yeah. So if he scores on that one, we're talking about what a great game, fantastic way to finish, way to, what a play by Leon Drysettle said Nugent. So that's the margin there. Uh, the, Georgie the fifth made a fantastic save on Nuge and allowed the Colorado Avalanche superstar McKinnon set up a goal the other way. So I thought Leon he made a couple mistakes. But I thought he was, he was good. Like, there was a few backtracks where he was very good coming back. Um, this is one game. I, I said before the game that whoever wins this game, it doesn't set them up that they're the better team. And whoever loses the team, they get this game, it's not like, okay, you know what, back to square one. This was two teams playing very well, went head-to-head. And at the end of the night, we were, what, a, a second and a half from going to a shootout. So, uh, big picture. I have no problems with the way Leon. I think Leon has been playing some of his best hockey of the season over the last three, four weeks. Struds? Yeah, that first goal is a tough one, right? You have kind of inside position. Then Walker, who actually had a really good game, um, obviously scoring two goals, really helps. Good. Just just jumps by him, and and then you he kind of loses his edge and can't can't get by. And that's just kind of a lesson that you know once you establish inside position on the back check, you got to stay you got to stay there and keep working towards it, but. It happens all the time. Uh, well, not all the time, but it happens to forwards, right? They, you know, you can't trust a forward. I've said it once. I've said it a thousand times till I die. <laughs> you put it on my tombstone. <laughs> well, no, it's true. I mean, like, let's just call it what it is, right? Like, it's it's the truth. And and yeah, I don't want to get into it, but it, it's just the truth. So um, no, Leon, like it, it was. It's it, when there's other good players on the team. It's it is, and there's that many good players on another team. You're, you're constantly under pressure and there's really no shifts off, right? And that's the that's always a hard thing. Playing those games, you can't, there's, okay, here comes Stradwick and Sortini and McIntyre. We can take a shift off, right? Like, it's just constant <laughs> pressure you're feeling. Um, so those guys, like, it's it was, a, it was a big, big, tough, strong, fast game. Um, I, I would watch that game 10, 10 nights in a row. Like, I, yeah. I, 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 I hope we see these two in the playoffs because I'd love to see a rematch from... Uh, well, just a rematch. A little bit of perspective here from Natural Stat Trick. Dreisaitl at 5-on-5 five five played 10 minutes and 16 seconds against Mikkel Rantanen, uh, 9 minutes and 18 seconds at even strength against Nathan McKinnon. His job with Fogel and McLeod for the first two periods <laughs> was to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against that line. Yeah. And they basically ended up splitting it down the middle. He was 50%. Uh, uh, the shot attempts were 50% uh, through that game up toe-to-toe -to -toe against those guys. Now, Knobloch made the change later on in the third period to go Dreisaitl, McDavid together, head-to-head -to -head against Nathan McKinnon. But, Brownie, what did you think of his decision 
to assign Leon Dreisaitl a line that was big, powerful, and strong like that and, and give that responsibility to Dreisaitl, Fogel, and McLeod? Well, I think that if when when the Oilers are in the playoffs, I think that Leon's line will always play against the other team's top players. I think that's what they want. They want Leon as the, the, the two-way guy, and then that allows Connor and his line mates to go out and dominate offensively. So I, I wasn't surprised by it. McKinnon, he is fast, but he is a bull. Like, he is strong. Yeah. Brandon is strong. So I think they like the physicality that – Leon can bring to that, and then it allows Connor most nights to go out and just dominate because it's going to be a mismatch, whoever they put him against. Unfortunately, as Knobloch said, they were a little stale. Second period, the second half of the second period was dominated by the Avalanche. And I think that's why Knobloch said, okay, we need to get something going in the right direction. Let's put stars together. And I know that uh, Shoggy and Strides, I know that in Edmonton, everyone thinks you got to have Connor and Leon on separate lines. And we understand that. But this is a Colorado Avalanche, a Stanley Cup winning team. And they load up. Their best three players are always playing together. So that you can win championships with your three best players on the same line. Colorado has proven that. Yeah, no, that's a fair point. Um, I, I, I love it. I love when Leon goes against those top because I think he is so um, arrogant, confident, uh, whatever you want to say it, he he can't wait to try to to slow that team, that guy down and to try to take advantage of that matchup, and so I, I just love that and that's a compliment like that. I'm not sure if arrogance is the right word, but definitely confidence. You 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 want to match up and you want to prove you're the best. So I love when they have Leon against those guys, and I think that that is the recipe, in my opinion, of success in the playoffs. Leon against other teams' top line, and obviously on the road it's a little bit harder. And then at home. Uh, you get Connor out against everybody else. But that also means that then Darnell Nurse is out there with whomever is his partner, DRNA in this case, although he's nicked up a bit. Then that's that is the job of those five to slow down the other team's top line. And that but the trade-off is that everybody else has to contribute offensively because it'll be a little bit harder night for uh, Leon and his buddies to score. Yeah. I I mean, his stats line here, the, the minus three stands out. He had four shots on net, six attempts. He had four hits, won 67% of his draws, you know, 14 of the 21 that he took. Uh, I like what putting him, like Colorado very clearly has one line that is loaded right up, much like the Oilers, right? You ran into McKinnon on a line, then Nachushkin's a very good player as well. You know, this forced Leon Dreisaitl to have his legs moving. He was not... This Leon Dreisaitl needed to skate miles and miles and miles to accomplish yeah. his task tonight. He really did. There was no room for not being in it every single shift because the margin for error is so small against Colorado. So, Brownie, I like what you said. A couple of back checks where it was like one avalanche player working his way up ice and Dreisaitl was on his horse to get back as fast as he could. I liked it, man. He was in it. And a couple of mistakes in the stats line doesn't look great, but but overall, I didn't mind his night. And so big picture here, guys. And we'll talk about Stuart Skinner next segment. We'll talk about Vinny D'Arnay on the blue line a little bit more in our next segment. But let's just discuss big picture here, Brownie. Measuring stick game or not, whatever you want to call it, two Titans clash here. If you're an Oiler fan right now, how should you be feeling about the idea of these two teams potentially meeting in an extremely important seven-game series and Edmonton's ability to come out on a much better side of it than they did last time around. How should they be feeling tonight based on this? Uh, I think excited. Uh, A, for the type of hockey you will see. I, and I know that Strud's loves the 3-2 game, but if these two teams play each other in a best of seven, there's also going to be a couple 7-6 games thrown in there. They're that skilled. Uh, so uh, it, this was a crapshoot. It was 2-2 two going into overtime. Now, we don't play three-on-three -three overtime in the playoffs. So that meant these teams would just continue to roll their line. Uh, the Oilers, I think, we know what we're going to get with Connor and Leon and Hyman. Uh, Nugent Hopkins, I thought, had a good game. What you want to be excited about if you're an Oilers fan right now, they got production out of their third and fourth line. Carrick gets a big goal. He only play, I think he had the fewest amount of minutes of any player in the game tonight, but he scored a big goal. And then you had the, the, the goal that Fogel scored. Again, he, at that point, he wasn't. I don't believe he was on the ice with Leon on that goal. So he was out there in a in a role position. He scores a goal. 
The Oilers have lost in the playoffs the last couple of years because they got very little production out of their role players. Tonight, in a big game against a great team, their role players were the ones that gave the production for this team. Their role players scored the goals. So for me, if I'm an Oilers fan, I'm excited, A, to get to a, a conference championship, and B, to be able to beat a team as good as Colorado. Yeah, not surprised to hear that my colleague Rob Brown wants to just throw the dice down the craps table and just say, okay, we're just going to be 14 goals today. Let's just hope we get eight and the other team only gets six. Like, <laughs> just typical offensive uh, way of thinking. Um, so I, 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 I agree with your idea that the, the, the bottom six were contributing. But I think that a more controlled style of play is is good for the owners because I think that they that, that's how they're feeling comfortable. They're getting it done that way, and I think it's more predictable for Stu Skinner and his and uh, or or Pickard if you have to see him. Yeah. So a couple things to keep in mind. I thought Matthias Ekholm looked like he was getting over a flu bug. Uh, we know that he's been sick lately. He looked. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe gassed late in some shift struts in a way that he maybe normally doesn't. Not saying he was bad tonight. I just he he wasn't quite up to full speed, so we'll keep that in mind. But the one thing I'll just kind of throw out there, and you guys can comment on it if you want. I'll just sort of leave it right there. But I couldn't help but feel as I was watching that game tonight, and I'm going line for line and rolling lines and rolling D pairings. I was thinking, feels like the owners might be a D man short here in this matchup over a seven game series. A true second pairing guy that can move the dial and be a difference maker as a true second pairing guy in a clash of Titans, the orders to me felt thin on the back end. I'll, I'll feel this one. I mean, I, I think this is something that we've, we've kind of talked about. Um, and, and I think what they need is a, a real puck mover on that second pairing or whoever play whatever pair you consider Darnell Nurse's partner. Um, and it's not there. So, uh, a little tough to compensate. You don't just manufacture that. And, you know, Paul Coffey is going to tell the guys to keep making plays, but you can tell me to, you know, be a good singer, but I don't have a good voice. Right. So there, there's only so much you can do with what you have. So I, I, I would not disagree with you, but this is what they've got. So they've got to figure it out how they're, how they're going to do it. And, um, you know, it's, they're short. There's no doubt they're short. And other teams will come up short when they come up with injuries or other issues they go through at Brownie. But they're healthy and they might still be short, Brownie. Well, I agree. I've, you look at the three pairings that Colorado has. They have McCarr in the first, who's he's the best defenseman in the world. And in the second, they got <laughs> Gerard, who he, he moves the puck well. He jumps up in the play. And then they got Walker, who's in their third pairing, and he scores two goals and probably should have had a hat trick in the game. Colorado, yeah. their defense moved the puck well. They jump up in the play well. Uh, what they lack in bottom production in their bottom six players, they add with the fact that they've got defensemen that can jump up in the play and make plays for those guys. Manson, a number of times, jumping up in the play. Colorado is a, one of the favorites to win a Stanley Cup, and one of the big reasons is their back end. They're strong on the back end. And they were able to trade Bowen Byram, who – been all world since he went to Buffalo because they are that good on the back end. So, yeah, I, I see exactly what you're saying, Chugger. And it becomes even more apparent if there is an injury to the Oilers oh, yeah. on, on the back end come playoff time. That's the thing that I've said right from the beginning that scares me the most about the Oilers. They've been so healthy. I don't know if they can absorb an injury on the back end like other teams around the league can. All right, time to get to our You Can Youth Services Relentless Player of the Game. If you're looking for laborers for your business, You Can Youth Services can help. They train 18 to 25-year-olds, getting them ready, willing, and able to join the workforce. It's a fantastic program, and we are so proud to be partnered with them here on Got Your Back. Check out their Road to Work program, www.youcan.ca. Struds, who are we going to go with for the Relentless Player of the night, buddy. It's for specific play. It was on Sam Ooh. Carrick's goal. Uh, like Corey it. Perry gets his stick yanked out of his hand, yeah. which was a <laughs> non-call. And uh, you can see he's like, what the hell? Well, he just keeps he pursues the puck, kicks it to an area for someone else to get it. And then, I don't know, three seconds later, uh, Carrick gets a rebound and scores. And so, you know, most players, they would they would lose their stick. Like, hey, I got to go find my stick and go get it back. Not Corey. He sees he has the puck is around him. 
and puts a puck where his buddy can get it. So I, I just love that. That is why he's here. That is what he, the, the value he brings. 900th point of his career. I know only uh, a few of them are with the Oilers, but I, I love that play, Brown, when I saw it. Oh, I agree. I, he is so, I'm trying, shifty, slimy. Uh, like He made a play around the net where he pulls the puck in tight and just slides in front of the net. He, he does not have the same speed, and it's not even close. But when he is in the offensive zone, he is so smart and makes nice plays and creates things for his teammates. And I agree with you, Struts. Most guys uh, would, A, try to find their stick, B, try to keep the puck in their feet and try to absorb a hit, or, or C, at the very worst, try to kick the puck towards the board. He was trying to make a play. And that's a guy that's, well, he's got 900 points for a reason. He's got an incredibly high hockey IQ, and I think that was a great, great play to be the relentless player of the night. All right, lots more to come ahead on the podcast as we remind you that Brownie's appearances are brought to you by Kin Print, high-quality apparel and promotional products to take your brand to the next level. Visit kinprint.ca. When we come back, takeaways. The fastest-growing male grooming company on the planet just got even better. Backscape 2.0 with a revolutionary friction fit handle makes the razor easy to pop in and out to shave not only your back, but anywhere on your body. And those hard to reach spots just got even easier with the new ergonomic design. Backscape's new titanium shave head makes for a smoother, more comfortable shave that respects your skin. Backscape 2.0. Stay smooth, gentlemen. The Brindley family has made it their mission to create the best tasting flavor rums on the planet, and they've knocked it out of the park with their shipwreck rums. Brewed off the small Caribbean island of St. Kitts, their spice rum is aged four years in bourbon barrels and infused with natural vanilla. Their shipwreck vanilla is blended with natural Madagascar vanilla, giving it an incredible smoothness. One sip and you'll agree, it truly is a vacation in a bottle. Available at your local liquor retailer. Please enjoy responsibly. Time now for our takeaways brought to you by Redefined Health, focused on restoring proper health and function, not simply reducing symptoms. Redefined Health is a multidisciplinary clinic dedicated to helping you get healthy, stay healthy, and perform better. Check it out at redefinedhealth.com. Go see Dr. Tyler Fix. Before we get to takeaways, guys, ran into uh, an awesome family on my way into morning skate. Or no, in, uh, yeah, into morning skate earlier on today. Couple kids, cute as can be. Zuby, we grabbed a picture. So say hi to Rayhan and Zidane. You can see the brothers here. One adorned in Avalanche colors, the other in Euler colors. So Rayhan, he called a four. He called a shutout for the Avalanche. Zidane called a four-three Oilers victory. Their dad Hafiz was there as well, and uh, so they listen to the podcast all the time. They came up and said, "We, you know, we love the show." Uh, listen to it in the car together in the mornings and such. So they're big fans. So I got their predictions, and Z is a lot uh, more disappointed tonight than Rahan, but they both got to see a fantastic game. So, guys, thank you so much for listening to the podcast. A little fun brother uh, rivalry in that one tonight. Uh, Struddy, thoughts on what Stuart Skinner showed tonight? Because one of the things that I think sits in the, the, the kitchen of Oiler fans is wondering, <laughs> What's it going to be like with Skinner at playoff time? How is he going to do? He's shown he can be a really good regular season goalie, but you know that performance last year left something there, and tonight was a really good opportunity for Skinner to plant a bit of a flag. He was overused last year, Oilers fans. I think we can all agree on that, <laughs> and I believe he was tired. I know I'm going to keep saying that, so that's why I've got to be careful how much he plays. But that experience of going through the playoffs – it, it prepares you for something different. You've never seen it before. You don't know what it's like. Neither does the last, the, quite frankly, the first full year of the NHL. This year, it looks like he's managing his energy much better. Tonight, I thought he looked very sharp, and the pucks were hitting him. I didn't really think he was reacting as much as the pucks hitting him because he was in the right place prior to the puck uh, you know, being shot. So I thought he was great. He, I thought he was fantastic. He made some really key saves. A um, couple posts. I thought most of them outside of the post. You guys might have a better sense. Uh, you were in the building, but Brownie, I, 
this, not that I needed confirmation for my belief in Stuart Skinner, but tonight I think was just another step for him saying, hey, I've got this against a really good team. Yeah, I agree. I thought Skinner was excellent. I thought both goalies in this game were excellent. Uh, you know, the Colorado Avalanche and the Edmonton Oilers, I think there's a lot of people think that that could be the Western Conference final and one of those teams will go to the Stanley Cup. Colorado is in the same position as the Oilers. They have an unproven goaltender. Georgie the fifth, uh, I mean, he's had the one playoffs with the, the Avalanche. It did not go well. It did not go how they expected. Uh, so he's got to prove himself. And I thought tonight both goaltenders proved themselves in a, in a big game and a big moment. And what we've seen with Skinner in, in, this year, that in every big moment that has come his way, he has shown. So I think it's a confidence builder for Skinner, certainly a confidence builder for his teammates. And there's belief in that dressing room that Skinner not only is good enough, but will be good enough for, for a long playoff run. In a big game tonight, both goaltenders were excellent. So I think that gives the fans of Edmonton a little more belief that, that Skinner can get it done. What did you think of McKinnon and McDavid? Two guys here, you know, McDavid trying to get himself into the mixture for the scoring title, and 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 he is. But we were sort of expecting, you know, I don't know what we were expecting, but you know, at the end of the night, it's it's some of the other players and other guys throughout the lineup that end up with it. Who do you think had the more notable night between these two guys that are right up at the top of the scoring race, Struds? Who was more notable? Oh boy, that's a tough one. Well, I mean, the, the play at the end of the game, obviously, to the pass mm -hmm. to, to get the game winner, I think that is very notable. Um, oh, but man, they were they were both tight. I mean, I, I I don't like this idea where we say the top two players cancel each other out. I, I just no, I, I, no, I don't, don't like That's that. Goofy. I hear people. I think it's a cliche, and I, I get it. Like Brownie uses a lot, but I don't really I don't really like it too much uh, because. I think it's just, you know, there's other players that are trying to stop them as well. They get a lot of attention and obviously they, they do a good job, you know, um, trying to create, but I, I just don't, I don't like that notion. I just don't like, I don't believe in that idea. So I guess if you're going to put a, you know, a gun to my head, I, I would probably say McKinnon because of that final pass uh, Brownie. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I don't know what the stat line was for McKinnon, but, Connor Connor's minus two with no points tonight. McKinnon set up the game-winning goal on a nice play. Uh, both of them were noticeable. Uh, both of them uh, at times were dominant in, during certain shifts. Um, I, I think McKinnon tonight was one up on, on Connor just because the end of the night his team won. It was on a play that he made. So I, I, I don't know if I've ever said they cancel each other out. I do feel that both those players <laughs> in games will have good games and there will be time, there will be a need for role players to come up and step up big. The, the last time these two teams met, Connor and Leon had great playoffs stats wise against Colorado yet lost four straight because the role players of the Colorado Avalanche were better than the role players offensively than the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, soft. They were both decent, says the Dr. Uh, Carpy. Yeah, I think both guys were really good. I, I thought, I mean, the Avalanche took a lot of the play in the second period, and I thought McDavid was a little bit quiet through there, but then in the third, thought he had some really good looks. Like, you know, it's, it's hard to point at many guys and say they didn't play well tonight. Like, the Oilers played well, and one of the things that they had, Struds, was a, an entirely usable bench late in that game. I mean, he was rolling those lines and players were seeing action and really outside of Dayarnay who got nicked up in the fight, uh, you know, in a game against a deep team that could be a conference final game, Chris Knobloch looked down at the bench in front of him and had a bunch of usable players. And that, to me, that was a good sign. I'm going to throw something guys at you. I, I believe why that is, is he trusts the centers on that line, on those lines. Mm -hmm. I really think that makes a difference. You trust the centers, you're going to put them out there because you know that in your own zone, there's now 2D and a center that you trust down there. Brownie, is that unfair to previous players? No, I think I think it's true. And it's also, you, you don't get caught. If, you're, if you put a line out there hoping they survive a shift and all of a sudden the puck gets iced and you don't have full faith in that center, 
to get the job done defensively. Now they're stuck in their own zone for a face-off. You know the other team's putting their best players out there because they caught you tired, and you're a role player on a third or fourth line. If, if that's the case, it's in the back of Knobloch's mind, he won't play those lines for fear of that happening. But I do believe he trusts Carrick to be a smart defensive centerman. He trusts Henrique to understand his role, and he is very good at it. So, yeah, I do believe that because he trusts the centermen, and I think he, I think he trusts all the players now that they're in the lineup for the Oilers. He trusts them defensively to get it done if they get caught in a what would be perceived as a mismatch. And if they, these two teams play each other, guys, they are that close. And if they're that close in their tie games, like we saw tonight going into overtime, overtimes in the NHL playoffs can go a long, long time. You're not playing on three on three. You can't have a short, short bench if all of a sudden you're going to start <laughs> playing into overtime and second overtime. So I do believe that that's one of the reasons they've got better depth now, that if it gets into, you know, third game of the series, fourth game of the series, now we're going to overtime. You have to have guys that you can trust that can play in all situations because come playoff time, they're going to have to. What are your thoughts on, on Henrik Strutty? Like, are Oiler fans going to have to kind of brace themselves for the idea that there might not be a lot of offense from this player down the stretch here? That, um, to me, so far what we've seen, he is very clearly a third-line center, not a top-six forward so far, and that he's going to do things in a certain way that, aren't necessarily structured towards putting up much in the way of numbers. Yeah, but that's what they needed. You know, they they needed a third line center. I I mm-hmm. believe that was the the goal of the trade. Um there, there'll be times I think where he, he he moonlights up there and and just to change energy. I didn't think that that line had particularly great night tonight. I think if I was evaluating all four lines, I wouldn't say that they were amongst the top 2. Uh, but you know what he there's gonna be nights like that right individual lines aren't going to dominate every night um but the offense is in there now you have to keep in mind he's not in the power play so that that takes mm-hmm. a little bit away of that juice that he had down in anaheim he is killing some penalties but i i i'm when when the pressure's on when when it, when it, when you're in your own zone and you're struggling and you're trying to get it out people have been through it before are calm and they're going to make the right decision. And that is who Adam Henrique is. And I believe that's why he's on this team, Brownie. Well, I think that if he's centering a third line, and as a third line, they are even or plus in a playoff series, he did his job. I don't care how many points he gets, if he gets no points. If he's yeah. even or plus in a playoff series, he did his job. Because they've got guys that can score and they've got a power play that can score. And I think that that's what Knobloch likes about him is when he puts him on the ice, he feels very, very confident that he's going to get the job done. To me, he's kind of like, he's not the same size, but when the Oilers played Winnipeg a few years back and Lowry was on the ice, I just felt there was going to be zero offense for the Oilers <laughs> because Lowry was so yeah. sound defensively. And I think that's yeah. what I'm seeing with Henrik too. He just makes all the right decisions, and that's what you want in a third-line centerman. It'd be interesting to see if uh, what Vinny Darnay's health status is. Team has a day off tomorrow. And then they'll be back on the ice Monday. Struds, um, you know, how do you think Darren acquitted himself tonight, uh, you know, before the scrap? I would submit that, you know, he the, the speed of the game was a little bit much for him and uh, sort of felt like that pairing needs to change was what my feeling was as I was watching him and Nurse mm. together. It, it, it definitely was a very fast game. Really, really fast game. Um, this And it's... So the speed obviously affects how quick you have to move, but I think even worse than that is how quick you have to think. And, and I'm not mm-hmm. suggesting that Darren is not a smart guy, but just you have to process everything so quick. You have to get it through your mind. Okay, this is why I'm moving quickly and having it. That's where things can be, become a little bit challenging when you're too far up the lineup. And so there's been a lot of good games in, uh, for, for Darren, I think, playing in that second pairing. But you get against a team, one of the strongest teams, maybe the strongest one in the, in the West now, uh, that's what you can see happen. Now, if he is dinged up, and I, I, I watched the fight a couple times and trying to figure out where it may have happened. Generally speaking, in those situations, we're talking about shoulders, hands, wrists, something like that, right? Like I, it, it, you, you can hurt your knees, I guess, a bit, but I'm generally thinking that might be what it is. Uh, and I've, I have no idea, but that's just when there's an injury in a fight. That's usually what it is. Um, if, if he is injured, 
The first guy who's playing is Phil Broberg. He is getting, I know there's got to be some cap gymnastics, but that's the first guy that's coming up, Brownie. Okay, well, I I disagree. I think it would be Stetcher that would play because he's a right shot, and I think you're going to play the right no. shot um, defenseman. So I would go with Stetcher. As for I did agree though with your with uh, your assessment of of Dayarnay. There's there's two things when you play against really fast players. Colorado is a fast team, and McKinnon is McDavid fast. Like he is incredibly fast, and he's like McDavid where his engine never stops. And it's not okay. just your feet; it's your brain. Both of them have to be going fast. You don't have time to make a play. You have to have already thought of where you're going with the puck before you get it. Because if you get the puck and now start thinking, too late. And Colorado is very good at forechecking. So I do believe at times in the, the first, before he got hurt, that uh, there were moments where Dayarnay was uh, a little overwhelmed. And, I mean, it's not a bad thing. There's many defensemen have been overwhelmed by – McKinnon and his line mates with the Vancouver Canucks were overwhelmed by him the other night too. But yeah, he, there were some struggles tonight uh, for Vinny that I, I thought when Kulak moved to the right side and started playing with Nurse, I thought he did a nice job because he's got the speed to be able to play against those guys. But yeah, I think there were moments where Vinny was uh, in a little bit over his head with the speed of some of the Colorado players. Yeah, and I think that, you know, CC had some tough moments tonight as well. I mean, but Colorado's a team that may he, they, they give defensemen yeah. tough moments, right? You're going to be able to pick those up. That's a 100%. hell of a team that's coming at those guys. And so we're, I'm not picking it apart, Stretty, based on, you know, one mistake here or there or whatever. I, I think the pace of that game had him a little bit overwhelmed. Um, and it just makes me wonder if there wouldn't be a window for a player who plays the way Stetcher plays to work his way into the dialogue about being a better option in a series against a team like that. He's going to have to play well, but I'm saying that I believe the window is cracked open here for Troy Stetcher to come in, and if he can play some good minutes and move the puck and be mobile, he gives him a very different look than Darnay, and I think that window is cracked open more than people maybe think it is. That, it could be, but I, that's why I, like when the trades happen, I'm, I said I was surprised to bring in a big heavy cycle yeah. breaker. They went the op they literally went the opposite of what I just described <laughs> to to you. So um that's there. But I'll go back to how I say about Broberg because you got to find out where Broberg's at and you got to see what he can do and see how he can bring it. How has he taken a step forward? All those mm -hmm. things because you're probably gonna need him in the playoffs. And I don't want his first game in a long time to be game six of a you know whatever a three two series in uh vegas that's that's not where i want to find out oh man where is he at now i so that's why i think that i would get him up there i i, I agree sketchers an option but the other one is to get broberg and get him going last word to you brownie then we'll let you go buddy i would i i think it's going to be stetcher i think you brought him in at the deadline as a right-handed shot defenseman to give you depth if a right-handed defenseman got hurt so i believe if Vinny is out, and I have no idea if he is, but I believe if Vinny is out, Stetcher will be the guy in. I mean, this is a guy who was playing 18 minutes a night in the National Hockey League already this year. He's capable of playing at this level. I would have him play and see. He's got his feet wet. He played his first game, and it was just eh, eh Let's see if he can be a little bit better in the next game. He would be my guy going in if Vinny is hurt. All right, good stuff. That was a Takeaways brought to you by Redefined Health. Uh, Struds, I ran into Brownie at the rink yesterday. Or was it this morning? Was it this morning, Brownie? Yeah, that was this morning, right? It was, well, it, it was yesterday now since we're tomorrow. Yeah, well, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, good point by you. I do have to say, Brownie, I'm going to give you some props here, bud. You're looking pretty good, man. Oh, boy. Like, honestly. Well, like you. I appreciate looking, that. Like, you're tightening oh, it up, buddy. You're keeping it tight. I was impressed. Are you guys going? Well, I, I've been going with all the other housewives to Tabata classes for the last six months, so <laughs> thank you. I appreciate you for noticing that. Whatever work you've been putting in that Struddy's been making fun of, you just keep your head down and keep going. Cause <laughs> How are his triceps? Triceps actually looked pretty solid. They, Struddy, you should have seen me dominate on Rogers ice today. I was dominant in my game against Craig Matavish and Team White today. So what I say is that, you know, like when you have big triceps, they look like you got kicked by a mule. 
I saw Brownie. It looks like he was kicked by a gerbil. That's how small this tricep <laughs> is. <laughs> Brownie, don't let him get you down, buddy. You keep doing those tricep extensions, Amster. pal. You were, you're Amster. looking great. You're filling out that golf I shirt. I know you well, got buddy. my back, Shoggy. I, I, I appreciate you that, that Shoggy. That's why great. we are the stars of this show, you and I. Hey, small you and I. chicken. Small number, chicken. Number one, tricep. number two. <laughs> uh, Scotty and I with lots more of show remaining. Have a great night, Brownie. Talk to you soon, buddy. We'll be right back. I know. Time to talk about your mortgage? It doesn't have to be a daunting conversation. With over 16 years in the industry, Maria Gallus with Maximal Mortgages knows how to make it easy. With access to dozens of different lenders, let Maria customize the perfect solution for you. Whether you're purchasing, refinancing or renewing, or a first time buyer, Maria's simplistic approach and expert advice will have you feeling confident you're in great hands making informed decisions. Take the stress out of your mortgage journey. Contact Maria Gallus at mortgagesbymaria.ca. That's mortgagesbymaria.ca. Long Shots Golf is the destination for both golf enthusiasts and sports fans. Top of the line track man simulators provide a highly entertaining and accurate golf experience, while a full service sports bar loaded with big screens and scratch kitchen make it a truly unique destination. They have locations in Sherwood Park and Edmonton. Experience the best indoor golf and sports bar in town. Visit longshots.ca. That's longshots with a Z.ca. Time to take a lap brought to you by Backscape, the fastest growing male grooming company on the planet. And it's even better now. They got Backscape 2.0. Yeah, check it out. Engineered with a new friction fit handle that allows you to effortlessly snap the shaver in and out to touch up the rest of your body as well. Use it on the back, the head, chest, wherever you need it. The new titanium shave head gives a smoother, more comfortable shave. Go to Backscape.com. If you use the promo code GYB10, that's GYB10, you'll get 10% off your first order. That's B-A-K-scape.com. Backscape. Stay smooth, gentlemen. Strutty, where's our first lap? Yeah, so the Canadians are on track to finish somewhere between bottom six to eight, somewhere in there, right? Uh, you know, they've, they're being teams like uh, Senators and Columbus who are actually trying to win. They have more points, but their journey through the rest of the year may have gotten a little bit harder. As it sounds like uh, Marty St. Louis, their coach, uh, has taken an indefinite leave of absence from the team. It sounds like it's something family related. And uh, first off, let's hope that everything's okay. Uh, generally, you know, it's 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 pretty serious if, if if a coach is leaving, but he's had a massive impact on that team. And I was very unsure of what his success rate would be with that group and they although maybe not translating a ton of wins i think he is developing specifically young guys like caulfield and uh suzuki uh and some others uh Gooley, another western league defenseman these these types of players so i hope everything's okay with marty who, whatever the issue is mm -hmm. um but i think it's a little harder now a former teammate of mine trevor latowski has taken over as the interim coach and who, who knows you know if it's the rest of the year or what but uh pretty big, big change for a team that obviously looks to their uh, coach for a lot of leadership. Yeah, no question. And we certainly extend our best wishes to, to him and his family and hope that everything is okay. He's, he was interesting Strud's like when he came in and when he got that job, I think a lot of people were sort of like, Holy smokes, you know, like, Oh yeah. Play off my hockey league benches. We talked about this, I think. And really question if it was smart and if it made sense. And then you talk to people that are around that team a lot. And the impact that he's been able to have on his players and the relationships that he's built and not necessarily driven through like crazy X's and O's, right? He has staff that handles a lot of that stuff as well, but he has taken to this in a way that I think when you talk to people that are close to it, I think that's a surprising result from what he thought when it first started. Oh, for sure. Now the interesting part is, you know, when they turn the corner, and they, I mean, I, I don't know if next year's year they turn the corner, but that could be two, three, four years into his tenure. Is he still the guy? Generally speaking, someone gets them out of the dump, or you know, maybe takes them in the dumpster, sure. gets them out of the dumpster, and then once they see the light of day, someone else takes over. So not always fair, but generally speaking, that's what we see. Yeah, hundred percent. And and but I think that I I don't know that he'll fall victim to that. 
I'm not sure that you you do that with Marty okay. St. Louis. I think if he's on the right side of it with his team and the players believe in him and he's, you know, I, I don't get the sense that uh, it's been so bad that he's, you know, that, that he's been wearing thin and who knows sure. what's to come. I, I feel like it's been pretty successful there. And in speaking to some people that are close to that team, his impact has been pretty notable. What's next? Uh, the great eight Ovechkin scores the game winning goal is 19th of the year, two one in uh, Vancouver against the Canucks. Uh, so, you know, I guess it's, it's exciting that you know, OV gets a one step closer to, to, you know, passing Wayne Gretzky for the all time gold record, but more importantly, uh, Vancouver only gets one point. So it doesn't have a, or sorry, they'll get no points. They get no points. So orders gain a point on them. They're now eight points out with a few games at hand and a game head to head. So uh, I, I can't believe we're even, even thinking that the Oilers could take first place in the division. Um, but here we are. It's unlikely, but unlikely doesn't mean impossible. Yeah. I mean, we had this discussion the other day. <clears throat> Excuse me. I mean, the game's in hand and then the head-to-head -head obviously is a good opportunity for them. But again, the Vancouver Canucks are in the middle of a nine-game homestand. They've been really Demco. good. They're playing some pretty good hockey. Demko is definitely, <coughs> excuse me, a pretty big issue. You know, two games in hand as of right now, Struts. It it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel that doable to me. I mean, it's I get it. The math maybe is there, but it feels like a real long shot here. The Canucks are going to have to play like what five hundred hockey from here to the end for the Oilers to be able to do it, or above just above five hundred hockey, and they're a six seventy six team. Uh, well, I mean, not really. They'll just have to win the two games at hand. Now they're four points behind. You win the one head-to-head, -head, and now you're two points behind. You just have to win, you know, two more games than they do. So it's it's not a, it's not impossible. But, I, I you know, I, I think it's very unlikely they catch them. But I can't believe we're even talking about it or, or yeah. looking up to see how. I didn't think they'd catch Vegas. I didn't think they'd catch L.A. And yet here we are <laughs> talking about that. It's mind-blowing, man. It's mind-blowing. Yeah, pretty impressed with the Vancouver Canucks have done this season. Remember, the Oilers got a flipping mouthful of it the first two games of the year. Remember, it was like, oh, Vancouver awesome. did that to you to start the year? Oh, man. Well, that all looks a little different now when you look at the team that Vancouver actually was and is and ended up being. Yeah, well said. No doubt about it. All right, that was Taking a Lap, brought to you by our friends at Backscape. Uh, two segments left. When we come back, uh, we'll do Struddy's World, and then lots of great comments coming in on the stream. Although, Zuby, what the heck just happened on the stream there? Somebody, uh, ba -ba -ba, where is it? I'll need more information. Jay. <laughs> too much information. I too often find myself naked in the bathroom during the show. Uh, I don't know where that came from, uh, Zuby. I think it uh, might have been in relation to the backscape uh, footage. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. That. But I'm not 100 percent sure either. Some of the then the next comment he made it sounds like he's uh, it actually was sent to a, the wrong chat or something. No, I'm just oh, kidding. Oh, whoops. All no, right. I'm just well, kidding. I don't actually think it's that. I'm, I'm just not. Steve I'm just not digging that deep in. on it into the details now. I'm. I'm just staying. He paid us a very you know, nice compliment before that, so I'm just sticking with that. Struds, yeah. Tell Steve to quit texting in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That Steve Taylor, hundred percent. That Steve Taylor. Uh, all right, Struddy's world. When we come back, winter is upon us, so why not make the best of it? Marmot Basin Ski Resort is where it's at. Ski half price every day, no blackout periods. Pick up your escape card for ninety nine bucks and make winter fun more affordable. Half the price, all the powder. Get yours at www.skimarmot.com. Okay, heroes, are you trying to tough it out through a sports or life injury right now? Trying to prove your mettle by grinding through, gritting your teeth? Well, Redefined Health is here to say it's time to come on in. At Redefined Health, they'll high-five you for your toughness and then get to work on helping you fix the problem. Helping athletes and heroes find better balance, performance, and injury prevention, visit redefinehealth.com. When you make a mistake, heads should roll. It's not right. And I'm here, someone has to put their foot down. Now that I say it out loud, it does sound a little crazy. Guy look good. <laughs>
Time out for Strutty's World, brought to you by DLR Vinyl Products, where they've got locations in Calgary and in Edmonton. Whether you're a homeowner, contractor, builder, DLR is the most reliable source for vinyl fence. Opened back in 2005, and they're not going anywhere. Unmatched service, high-quality North American-made products. Visit DLRVinylProducts.ca. Maintenance-free, no sanding, no staining, no painting. It's high quality stuff. I have it in my yard and it is well worth looking into. Struts, where are we going, bud? Well, give credit to Elliot Friedman. He's the one who talked about this story tonight on the uh, broadcast of the Arizona Coyotes. It sounds like on Thursday that uh, a parcel of land that uh, they have, the Arizona Coyotes have interest in for around $60 million is, is going to go up for auction. It will take time, but the, the, the city is city, yes, they can go up for auction. So, uh, there's a, a realistic chance that Arizona will put a bit in and get and be able to get it. Now, the problem and what Elliot says, if they're unable to get that, that piece of land for whatever reason, uh, they will then take a different, in his words, a different fork in the road, and that fork in the road would be relocation. Um, you know, Phoenix uh, ownership is really pushing hard to get this done, to get this land, to get it built. It would still be a number of years before they get out of the uh, mullet arena, but. It, it feels like, and I, I got sense watching the big guy, Elliot Freeman, that if this doesn't work out, the team would probably the next step be relocation. Obviously, things can change, but that's what it is. And I think that we're we're at that point. Uh, we being the you know hockey fans, the NHL, all that. It's just it can't keep up. This would be two years, and I, I'd be for sure next year they're in there. Probably another one or two after that as well. So it's just it's it, it doesn't look good on the NHL, and I'm an advocate for that not happening anymore. But maybe towards May, June, we might know where it's at, Sugar. Yeah. And I mean, the temperature is going up, right? You recall the Players Association, <laughs> the big guy digging Party. in on the arena pretty hard, you know, with some pretty harsh comments. Uh, this thing has been limping along for years and years. And, you know, with, with talk of Utah, with talk of Atlanta, it feels like there are plans being put in place so that there is a quick solution ready-made and available if and when this thing falls through struts. Like they've got multiple options sitting there now that kind of feels like the trigger could be pulled on either one of those pretty quick. And I don't think that's a coincidence. No, it's it's people have their arms open, right? And I, I, I'll, I'll be honest, I, I don't understand Atlanta like the third time. Like how bad do you want a team there? Like does Gary Bettman have retirement property in Atlanta, Georgia? It's a nice community, but I even when I would go play there, I don't remember seeing any thrash or stuff anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, even inside the arena, it was Hawks. So I I covered an all star game there one year, and it was yeah. Well, it was. I mean, in terms of you know the impact that that event seemed to be having on the city, I just it was kind of. There are sometimes you go to those events and it's like, oh man, yeah, it's happening, and it was like, yeah. Yeah, it definitely it. it wasn't buzzing. I would say. Yeah, yeah, that's not a word I'd use with hockey in Atlanta. <laughs> um, great town, I loved it there. I thought it was a great spot, but I I don't really understand that one. So I would be now things can change. I haven't been there in you know whatever 12, 13 years, so maybe it changes. But I'd be hesitant on that. Salt Lake City, I'd be all for it. David W. says, I look forward to hopefully seeing the Yotes remain in Arizona, but should there not be a viable option for them to remain in that U.S. state, relocation shouldn't be off the table. And again, the NHL seems to be lining up some ducks, putting a few things in, in place, and keeping some options open that might allow it to be a pretty quick change of direction. Might be a quick 180 and then a couple of spots that uh, are potentially ready to receive. So that'll be interesting. We've had lots of great action on the stream tonight, so uh, we're going to take a real quick break, and then we'll do uh, some time uh, for Ask Us Anything. Lots of good comments coming in, some more comments on the game. Uh, that was Strutty's World, brought to you by DLR Vinyl Products. Ask Us Anything is around the corner. For over 60 years, Belvedere Golf and Country Club has been delivering a high-quality golf experience to Edmonton and area. This beautiful private club located on Highway 21 just south of Sherwood Park occupies 160 acres and presents a challenging yet adventurous 18-hole design. A beautiful clubhouse, fully stocked pro shop, and warm, friendly staff truly make it feel like you belong to something unique and special. 
visit www.belvederegcc.com. Look at this comment coming in from X-Ray J. Same one that was talking about too often finding himself naked listening to the podcast. Strudwick taught my firstborn to skate. Thank you guys for your dedication, honesty, and journalistic integrity. Liked and subbed with a whole bunch of thumbs up and a whole bunch of hearts. There you go, Struds. Well, I I, I know him, and I, I shouldn't say this, but his firstborn was Nathan McKinnon. So if you want your son to be a great or daughter, <laughs> you I'm your guy. For Nathan McKinnon right now. I'm your guy. Wow. Anyone else? Anyone else? What's the name of your hockey <laughs> academy? Your camp study? What is it? You want to plug? What it's, is it? It's, it's I, I spent a lot of hours on this. Jason Strudwick D-Man Camps. <laughs> wow. Clearly you didn't get shown as input. You just went with your first thought, hey? That, well, no, that was my second one. The first one was D-Man Camps. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, hon, you got to put your name in there. Got to put your name in there. Super right, elite. Get, yeah. <laughs> let's get to Ask Us Anything brought to you by the Shark of the Park. Dun, dun. Rini Buclan of Maxwell Devonshire Realty. She's all about amazing service for her client. Buying a house is a big deal, right? You need someone you can trust and who you know is working 24-7 to either sell your home or help you find a new one. Highly recommend you give her a call. 780-994-0280. That's Rini Buclan of Maxwell Devonshire Realty. Zuby, why don't you hop on in here, bud? Lots of activity tonight on uh, the Weesh Johnson YouTube stream. So uh, what are people saying, bud? Well, there was a, a fair bit of debate going on when we started tonight. Um, of course, Sean Walker, uh, pretty active tonight. Almost got the Hattie, hey? Could you believe he had that breakaway chance mm. in OT? That would have been really something. Anyway, so talk about Sean Walker versus Cody CC. let's say. SKB says Sean Walker was the one who got away for the oil at the trade deadline. Do you you know is that do you feel that way looking at the team and do you think he would have been that big of an improvement over Cody CC I'd like to hear your guys opinion because it's been a great debate on the uh, on the stream tonight well I mean he just gave a massive middle finger to the Hampton Oilers with that performance tonight like let's just call it what it is different type of D-man right different type of D-man um very mobile jumps up in the play Look at the goals he scored. He just he, the one he he jumps in off the blue line. The other one he just f fires up the ice on the rush. Very aggressive. So no, there's no doubt those were two mobile goals that Cody CC is unable to score. Um, defensively, it's one game. I thought he looked pretty good. Um, so it's you, you can't get too excited about it. But I think the advantage is definitely in the offensive side of the the, the, the equation between CC and. Uh, and Walker. Yeah, and and again it comes down to which area are you going to make the additions? Because if you're using the assets to get Walker, you don't have the assets to make a significant move up front, right? So I think that trade with Walker was Johansson and a first and you know a bunch of retention uh, to make the money work in both directions because Johansson was a pretty big ticket. Um so yeah, I like the way he moved tonight. I thought he looked good. I, I commented to DNB, Daniel Nugent Bowman, who sits next to me during the games. I, I I like this guy is this guy is competing just fine in this game. Struds fast physical game. I thought he was just fine. In fact, he was competing in that game. So yeah, I mean the the argument at the time was you can debate whether it would be an upgrade or not on CC, right? You could debate that. But could you get him at a dollar figure where it maybe gave you a little bit of room to make some other moves and such too? So, yeah, I still think that's a fair point. Would he have been an upgrade on CC? I think there's a good chance that he would have been. Would he have maybe given you a little bit of space uh, because of the difference in some salaries? Potentially. Um, do I feel like maybe the Oilers are a D-man short when I watch, the, watch this game tonight? Yeah, I said that earlier on in the podcast. So totally understand that sentiment, Oilers fan. Um. Uh, Bobo Fett said, uh, Avs forecheck was fast and aggressive, forced oil D into some poor own zone outlets, especially the flanks. And if I could just uh, add on to that, Joe says, we, the Oilers, keep just firing the puck up the boards under pressure. Why aren't we using the middle uh, like when Knobloch first and Paul Coffey first got here? Uh, do, do you think... Do you, do you think they've gotten away from that and it hurts them? Or do you think that was just the nature of playing against the Avs when you have a forecheck like that? 
they constantly attack. They're constantly coming at you. They have speed. Like all their forwards are fast. You know, they they get up in the play and they they forecheck you. And as a D man, you know, you're trying to figure out your play as quick as you can. I always felt it was best to move the puck as quickly as possible off my stick because the longer I hold it, the more time that gives not only the guy coming at me, but the other guy's trying to go cover my partners or or my the wingers quickly. So I think that. They're trying to get it up. There's no doubt a straight pass is better. A straight pass to the center is incredibly successful, or sorry, is incredibly uh, helpful to everybody because it takes the pressure off, but is higher risk. So if you're feeling pressure, usually you're going to use the boards or go straight up to your winger. Vinny tried to use the middle like that tonight, Struds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Remember that play? Yeah. I Whoops. Do. I mean, that's yeah. the thing. And, and Knobloch admitted it. By doing this, we're going to have some moments this year where it bites you. Um, they definitely don't do it nearly as much as they were before. Definitely. Um, Fraud Chicken says, how do they get Kane going? No goals and only three points in his last 13 games. Uh, Roshan Nelson added uh, in his answer to that was when Kane led the playoffs in scoring, he was on McDavid's wing. <laughs> he says he needs to, Kane thrives in the spotlight. He's an X factor. Obviously, if you this was a simple answer, uh, one of you guys would maybe be the coach of the team, but... What do you see when, what does it get, what gets Kane playing at his best? And how do you think they can get more out of him? Struds, let me just take the first part of this. Here, here's what I'll say right. about Kane. I was watching Kane really closely tonight because my feeling on Evander Kane is there's going to be some ups and downs through the 82 game schedule. Um, you know, he'll play up in the lineup at times, then he'll play back in the lineup at times, a little bit up and down, right? I think that that's to be expected to a degree. But it's well worth it for the player that might be available to you at playoff time, right? He is tailor-made, designed to be a playoff specialist and, and exactly has the exact ingredients you need. So I was paying close attention to him tonight. And Struds, I thought he was fine tonight. I thought he was good tonight. I thought he skated well. I thought that line had some good looks. I was okay with it. He got mad through some hits. You know, I, I was okay with Evander Kane tonight. And if that's what they're going to get from him engagement-wise in the playoffs, what we saw tonight from a third-line perch, I think that was an okay start. You? Yeah. So he, when he gets emotionally connected to games and he's chirping and running and being abrasive and being annoying, that's when he's playing his best. You know, we we, we saw that through that whole playoff run, that first one. Um, So I have no doubt he'll get there. He, he, I, I think he can flip that switch. I think he can do that. And he can't help himself. It's a playoffs. He loves it. He wants to be, he kind of has that. And I, I don't, again, I don't like this word, but that arrogance about he thinks he's the best player on the ice. And, and yeah. like, I love that. I love that about him, right? And you need that. And it, it, it actually brings energy to others sitting beside him on the bench because they're like, man, this guy thinks he's amazing. And I'll give you an example. And I put it to Sheldon Surrey. Sheldon thought he was the best hockey player <laughs> best looking guy, best dresser. And like, I was, I'm a pretty confident guy, but I'd sit beside him. I'm like, God damn, I gotta be like this guy. Like, I gotta feel that. I gotta be like that too. And yeah. it, it actually made me a better, and I, we're the same age. It wasn't like I was 20 and he was 35. <laughs> um, so it makes a difference. And I think that, 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 that also affects his teammate. It, 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 it his energy is arrogance, arrogance is the wrong word, but his confidence radiates to the lineup. And uh, I, I I love that. I, I, I've, I've experienced it. Mark Messier, Sheldon Surrey, and now I see the same thing out of Kane. But there's something happening on the left side, two struts. Like, if Ryan McLeod plays the way he played tonight, Vander Kane's going to have a tough time getting back into that top six because there's a level of depth that they get with Kane on the third line. Right. Thought McLeod was good, man. Thought he skated miles. Thought he handled the puck well. A few moments, you'd, you know, like everybody that weren't perfect. But... If Kane's going to be on the third line, it's because Ryan McLeod is, you know, looking good in that second line, and that's good for this team. Uh, trying to give that third uh, line a purpose, a look, a definition. So I think it's as much about what Kane brings to a line as to what McLeod is doing. Yeah. Do you, a couple more, Zuby. Just to add on to that, Struds, do you think then, and I know when you did, we did, you guys did the new lines, your predicted lines, or what the lines you wanted to see after the trade deadline, you put Corey Perry with Evander Kane, I believe. And, and do you think, like, to get him engaged, like, because Perry's always in it, do you think that's the benefit of them playing together? Is that because Kane likes to stir it up, but maybe he needs the motivation sometimes, but Perry's always in it, it seems. 
Yeah, no, that's fair. That, that was part of my thought. Um, but I think the speed difference between Brown and Perry right now is going to probably make that a challenge um, on that third line specifically. So I think Kane will find he, – he's going to he, – he'll – I'm not worried about Kane in the playoffs. And I do like those three guys together, but they've only been together for, you know, like how was it, three games? Has it even been three games, Shocker? They've been together. Yeah, yeah, a few games here. So I think they, we have to like – Brown and Perry – yeah. Right. So there, there was yeah. a change there. Kane's been on the third line for a little bit here, though. Yeah. But uh, to be fair, I think that also there's some depth now there, and they can take different looks. They can move guys around, and I and I, I do believe that whatever starts game 83, that's not going to maybe be what you see at game hopefully 105. Right. Things are going to change over the course of that that time. Yeah. What you want to see from Evander Kane wherever he's playing in the playoffs, whichever line is similar to what we saw tonight. Right, just skate hard, finish checks, right. dump pucks in, you know, right. try and create, be emotionally engaged. Whether you're you're sitting on a second line and have a, a chance to put up numbers every night or a different role on a third line. And I think come playoff time, you know, I think there's a good chance that's what they're gonna get from him. Uh Adam Uremchuk says, I like Carrick over Derek Ryan so far. How do you guys feel about and obviously, Carrick scored that nice goal tonight, a big goal. What do you guys feel about that addition? And if you want to make that comparison directly to Derek Ryan. Different type of player. Um, you know, heavier player in Carrick. Um, loves, obviously, we saw him go to the front of the net tonight. I think they both can both win draws. But I'll say this. Derek Ryan still has a part to play in a successful playoff run for the Edmonton Oilers. You have said I, that. I, you have maintained that for yeah, sure. Yeah, and I and I truly believe that. Um, you you see it all the time. Guy, remember David Darnay? They uh, no, that was his name. Yeah, he, yeah, David Darnay. Yeah, they traded. I don't know what it was. Shogger, a, a fifth, fourth rounder for him out of I think New York. A sixth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like it wasn't like it was a, he was a bunch. big ad that year. <laughs> but he scored one goal. Yeah. One or maybe he scored one. But he, he scored a massive goal. And that's what you need. So I believe Derek Ryan, he has a part to play, guys. Like, let's not send these, cast these guys into the sun. Like, I, I truly believe that he, through injury and or opportunity, Derek Ryan has a part to play in this. Last one, Zuby. Let's wrap it up. Um, Bitumen said, and I wasn't able to, to check this, but he's usually a pretty good source. Uh, on the Henrique thing, he said, um, just talking about some of the analytics that that line had tonight, and he said that, uh, Henrique was outshot 16 to two at even strength tonight. Um, mm -hmm. that's a, a tough look, I guess, for a guy. There was just some other talk about, you know, over quote unquote overpaying for Henrique. I think it's, you know, still pretty early to say that, but uh, someone Taves to Kane said did not need to give up a first rounder for a third line center. Of course there's retention and all that in there, but uh, I don't yeah, know. I've how seen that a couple of times, Zuby, and I, people need to get their heads a little bit more square on that. They didn't give up. They didn't get a third line center for a first rounder. They, they got a third line center at a quarter of the price and they got a fourth line center at a reduced price as well. Salary retention is why that first round pick ended up being in play. Right. Uh, that's the reason why yeah, people need to keep that in mind. Look at, look at what Adam Henrique's salary was and look at what he is on the books. That's expensive. That costs. Yeah. Okay. One other thing. Oh, sorry. One other thing I wanted to say actually was uh, I, we hope Vinny DeHarnay is okay. Is there, I, I'm guessing it's still too early to get any kind of an update there. People have been asking about that as yeah, well. Yeah. Well, we asked, uh, we asked, uh, Knobloch after the game, and he, yeah, I think he took a pretty good punch there in that scrap. And obviously, they sensed something wasn't quite right. Uh, player wanted to be on the bench, so he stayed on the bench with his team. But the reason he wasn't playing wasn't because of the quality of his play. It was because they weren't 100% sure that he was okay. I just wanted to say, did you guys see in that fight, is Josh Manson, like, freakishly strong? Did you see how he, I mean, they had gone down, so I don't know if something happened to Vinny. I think they said he was at the end of a shift, too. But did you see the way Manson was, like, controlling yeah, Vinny's strong. body in that fight? Like, he's that guy must be a beast. Yeah, he's a strong guy. He's, there's no doubt he's a strong guy. I, I think, you know, again, I don't want to be too critical, but I feel like Vinny gets too close. And he almost bear mm -hmm. hugs the guy around. I think Vinny's got to get away. You, you don't want that when you're a really big guy, you do not want to be close to the other guy, even though Josh is probably 6'2 or 6'3. Yeah, big, tough boy. Good for Vinny for dropping the mitts. We hope he's okay. And we'll see what happens next game. Time for our gem of the night as we wrap it all up. Struddy, don't know if you had anything in mind or not. Uh, what struck you, buds? Um, I think I'm going to go with the gentleman who says that he also 
uh, has spent some time naked in the bathroom when he mm. listens to our podcast. Yeah, that one just came out of nowhere, Ray yeah. J or whatever. Yeah, I eye opener. Uh, yeah, that, hear that, that. Was, that was an eye opener on the stream. Zuby's response on the chat was like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> yeah. he, he did like a triple take. At well, because because first he complimented us, and then he slid that second comment in, and I said thanks a yeah. lot or whatever. So it's oh, like, yeah. it looked like I was responding to that comment. That was X-Ray J. He's, I don't know, yeah. maybe he just, maybe X-Ray J just enjoyed the game with a couple pops on a Saturday night. He's always there a good go. contributor here on the stream. And anytime you get after the 1 a.m. mark, shit starts to get a little bizarre on the podcast. <laughs> so we're going to wrap it up. Strads, uh, get to bed. Uh, just a programming note for you folks. We often do a Sunday night pod, but because this one was so late tonight, I think we're going to let this breathe for a day or so. So look for the next podcast to be on Monday night as opposed to Sunday night. Thanks so much for uh, joining us here on the stream. Thanks to Sherwood Buick GMC, our amazing title sponsors. Good job, Struts. Good job, Zuby. Likewise. Good night, guys. Okay. Cheers, everybody. Take care. Talk to you soon.